talked in front of a million people. Not a million, I'm exaggerating a bit. You were the first female vocalist on Nescafe Basement Season 2. I think it's it's great to have different talents in life, not just music. My passion of, for music still remains. Uh, my inspiration, my legend, my motivation, anyone who's listening to this podcast and, you know, to do music, to do what they love, you shouldn't just waste it on working and studying because that's what everyone does. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Arm Adni podcast. My name is Pranya Said Paul. Today I have a very special guest here with me today. Thank you Parise for taking out the time for being with us on our episode. Tell us a bit about yourself Parise. Thank you firstly for having me on this podcast and thank you for the great introduction. I'm really excited to be here. I would love to share my experiences and everything that I've been through with you. And I'm really excited for this podcast. So my name is Parise. It's a very difficult name to pronounce. Everybody struggles with it, which is like my biggest struggle in life to explain my name to people first. But other than my name, uh, what's interesting about me is that I do music. I, I grew up in a household where uh, my father has been a fan of music. He loves music. I come from a background that is very talented and artistic as well. My grandfather was a, a writer. He was in Radio Pakistan and my grandmother was also a writer. She wrote around 32 novels. But I think artistic attributes, you know, just come to you in some way or the other. That's how I am the way I am. And my father has always been into music. Growing up, um, I would just sit around, watch my father play the piano, sing, and I would just sit sit by him, sing with him sometimes and you know that's how I found my love for music. Just, just, just the love for my father was a part of my love for music as well. That's how I got into music and I started singing with him and then later on in school I started. So that's another story but uh, that I will share with you. But about myself, I am now working. So I, I'm working in an IT company in Pakistan I've been doing music on the site since I was 15. I got into this really cool platform. That's how my music career started. Before that, it was just a hobby. And then later on, it became a passion and became my career as well. But, um, you know, sometimes you need to take break, do something different in life. So I've taken a completely different route and I'm now working in IT. I've done my bachelor's from Lahore School of Economics. Over there, I studied economics and finance, which is very weird for a musician because, you know, as a musician, as an artist, people expect you to study music or study art or something like that. I think it's it's great to have different talents in life, not just music, but, you know, you need to be good at maths, you need to be good at, you know, you need to know the world, you need to have some common sense, so, which is why I believe that education is very important and my focus was not only on music but also on education so now i'm building a career in it but at the same time my passion of, for music still remains um, i'm i'm living the best of both worlds that's amazing that's pretty inspiring so i read that you were the first female vocalist on nescafe basement season 2 so can you tell us how that happened so this is a story when my sister she she knew that I was really into music and I loved singing and she encouraged me to join the music society of our school. For me, it was a crazy idea because I was never, I had never sung in front of, you know, a crowd of people. But she really thought that I had something in me and she pushed me. I, I, I still remember that day when um, she, you know, said that there are auditions happening in this classroom right now and you have to go. And I was the youngest out of everybody there because, you know, usually in societies like these, uh, people from A levels join and from O levels in grade 10 or 11. And I was just in six at that time. My sister just pushed me into the room and she said, now sing for them. I was just so confused, but I sang the only song that I was like really, really in love with at that time. And that was No One by Alicia Keys. I still remember the song and I sang a few lines and everybody was just baffled and they were shocked that such a small kid could have such a big voice. And I had I didn't know that I had such a big voice, but you know, the, the response that I got from everybody was so encouraging that, you know, that's the place I wanted to be. So 
um i started enjoying school because i was excited to go to these music society sessions and just be a part of the cl- club and just sit there and watch people sing and sing with them so my nest cafe basement journey basically started from here so what happened was that i would be sent to a lot of competitions from my school my my music rep was actually a great inspiration for me she was so encouraging and she was so nice she was she used to motivate me to do just to go to competitions and perform i would go there and perform and i'd win every competition i don't know how it would happen but i'd win every competition and i'd just come back with the trophy and be like oh i i won this and my dad would be like i you're actually good why are you winning such so many competitions and then you know people from school also got really excited and then there was this huge um, festival happening at lums at that time in 2013 and my school obviously chose me to go there uh, with a bunch of other people uh, to compete that was like the biggest competition i had been in i was so intimidated i was so scared because i think there were around 70 contestants and all of them were from universities all around pakistan time and i went there i just sat with you know so many people and i was so scared but then you know music is something that i do from my heart so when i sang i remember that they everybody just stood up they all just stood up and started clapping for me and i it was like it was surreal and um, so that was the first round i came back home i was very happy i told my dad that you know we i just participated and i sang the song and everybody stood up they really loved my song Then I got this notification on my phone that I got through to the second round. And that was like the biggest achievement for me because only 6 people were supposed to get through to the second round from the 70 from the group of 70 people. And uh, when I got through, I was so excited but I hadn't prepared any songs because I was just expecting to be out on the first round. So then I I I prepared a few songs, two songs at night with my dad and I went back the next day for the competition and I sang those songs and i was still very scared and i didn't know what to do but i just sang them because i knew that i was going to lose so there's no point in you know even trying so i just i was just really relaxed the second day and i sang the songs and everybody was still like clapping for me and they were cheering me and they were following me people were coming up to me and asking me my age and wh- how i can sing the way i sing which was very shocking later on then then for the third round i was just not expecting to you know get through to the third round these people they announced my name and they said in the top 3 are this this and Virize and i was like how is that even possible and i hadn't prepared a song for that round either so i called my dad and he said oh you have to sing this song now for the third round and the song was skyfall by adele it was like my signature song in that time because adele was has always been my inspiration so this round was now on the stage in front of a million people not a million i'm exaggerating a bit but in front of a lot of people it was on stage and it was a big thing i just sang i literally just sang and i called my dad and i just went home because you know that was like the end of the competition for me and then at night i'm just sleeping like 2 2 hours later i'm just sleeping and then i get a call from my friend who's at the festival there he calls me and says you know asks me where i am and i'm like i i told him that i'm home i'm i'm tired and then he says you know you won the competition and they're calling your name and you know they're trying to find you where are you and that was so shocking for me i was shocked that i'd won the competition i was really excited and it was a big thing for me so how i got into nest cafe was basically that there was somebody in the audience there who was already a part of season 1 they saw me sing there and they um, you know recommended me and referred me to the person who was doing nest cafe at that time that's how i got a call from nest cafe and you know that's how i got into nest cafe basement the experience was at nest cafe my experience was surreal it was amazing you know at first it was a little intimidating and scary because everybody was super old this time not even in universities they were like you know almost graduating and people were in their 20s 25 28 so they were all all kinds of age groups which was very interesting and i was the youngest there and i was i felt like an outcast at first but then when they heard me sing they realized why i was there just just mingling with all those people and interacting with them um doing music with them gave me so much exposure at such a young age that you know usually people when they get into universities they get that kind of exposure and confidence and i got that when i was 
so i'm very grateful for that and it was a great opportunity i got to meet so many people i got to sing my heart out and just enjoy myself where this is coming from and i think it's pretty inspiring and for all the audience that is watching that what were the challenges that you had to face while being in nascife basement people were so talented that i was so scared i was constantly judging myself and constantly like not sure if i was good enough to be there but then i realized that you know everybody was there for a reason i was there too and you know the funny fact is that since i was 15 i would bring my dad along to every jam session and every every you know kind of activity that took place there at first people would judge me and be like why is this child here and she has her dad with her and why is her dad here but later on you know bringing my dad was the best thing there because my dad became friends with everybody there and that just you know expanded my circle of friends there because my dad is not only you know just my dad he's a musician and he's he's just a very very friendly you know very a person who can mingle with anybody and because of him i got the chance to just you know be myself i think another challenge was maybe you know it was my first time recording actual actually recording in front of like a proper mic and in front of proper people musicians so that was scary for me it was very confusing at first but then you know every you know you you have your first and that's how you learn it was a great learning curve i got to learn so many technical things about singing about music about performing you know and about acting because every, it was everything was involved in that you know not just socializing and singing but you know professionalism how to how to act in front of new people how to be yourself but also be like restricted and contained and um I was a part of every song in that season so I was doing backing vocals for most of the songs and two songs I did on my own and that was really tough because just remembering the harmonies remembering the lyrics remembering everything and then you know just having such a crazy schedule coming from school directly to Nes Cafe and then just constantly singing there so I still remember at the time of the shoots from the morning it would start at like 8 a.m. and then the entire day would we would be shooting that would go on to like 3 4 5 am and then we just sleep on anything we could find a guitar case i would sleep on that i was tiny back then so i'd just sleep on a guitar case or a sofa or any chair or any kind of carpet i'd see i'd just like take a small 15 minute nap there just the crazy schedule i think it taught me a lot of discipline it was tough at first so this was a challenge that i faced there um i become more like you know resilient i think in even in uni times and even right now when when i'm working i don't feel the workload as much so these were the challenges i kind of faced but i'm very glad that i got to you know face those challenges because they've made me who i am today so being a female vocalist yourself have you noticed or experienced gender discrimination amongst your colleagues or in your field That's a very good question because when I got into Nescafe basement um so when I when I when I went downstairs I looked around and there were all I could see were men I was like where are the girls are they there do not any girls in this entire show where so I I saw this one girl sitting in a corner and I was like is there just one girl in this entire place and she's yeah in season 2 there were only 3 girls so there were two main vocalists and one backing vocalist and i was shocked i was i was amazed that you know there are no girls in pakistan who sing and that is not the case there are so many talented female musicians in pakistan not just singers but you know guitar players piano players but at that time there wasn't much exposure there weren't many opportunities and um, a lot of people didn't a lot of girls didn't get permission to do such things and i'm so glad that my dad was supportive enough to let me do it because i to be very honest in season 2 there were 3 girls and in in season 3 or 4 there were 19 girls exponential increase in girls was because you know they saw me on tv and i'm not just saying that because i'm saying that those girls literally came up to me and said that you know their parents saw me on tv and they saw me singing and you know that's what allowed them to be able to you know fight with their parents not just fight but convince their parents to do that uh, to be a part of such a platform and a lot of people came up to me and thanked me 
because you know they they got permission because of me and i'm so grateful that i got the opportunity to you know be that for those girls in this cafe basement there wasn't any discrimination at all it was a very nice and friendly environment hence given opportunity to 19 girls right after us as you see the culture is changing a lot there's so many female that ta- like there's so much talent and there's so many female musicians who are out there and who are doing so well i'm so grateful that you know maybe i i played like maybe 0.0001% role in making that happen and i'm glad i did but yes I wouldn't say that there isn't discrimination at all there is discrimination there's a lot of discrimination and I wouldn't take that away but in the platforms that I was a part in there was no discrimination but I do see like later on I I became a part of the mainstream music industry I did notice that people tend to prefer guys over girls and um they tend to give more opportunities to males over here than females but If you have the talent and if you have the passion I think nothing can stop you. If you're talented the world sees that. They don't see you as a gender, they don't see if you're a male or a female. They just see who you are, what you're representing and what your talent is all about. Hearing this is like you empowering women all all around the world to pursue their dreams and do whatever they want, whatever comes to their heart. that is pretty inspiring it's beautiful and i would love to hear it uh, did nescafe basement pave your way to more exciting opportunities or better opportunities so share it with us yes of course it did so when i got into nescafe i wasn't hopeful of a career in music it just seemed like a fun good opportunity i thought that you know i'd just go enjoy myself and that's it but then later on when it came out on tv the first song of mine that came out was boom boom by nazia hasan that it got a little bit of backlash because you know now we're trying such different genres we're trying electric pop indie and all these new genres but at that time nobody had explored them and uh, you know we we put like a very different twist on Nazi Hassan's boom boom so we converted it into a daft punk kind of song initially the first time i saw myself on tv singing like as a main vocalist was boom boom and i i immediately went through the comments starts, like you know they just started rolling in and i went in and i saw that people were not liking it very much at that time like the initial comments were like people said that you ruined the song but they didn't realize that it was like a fresh take on that song like we we, we just didn't want to do the re- we just didn't want to redo the entire song again so we wanted to do something different and then later on like when people listened to it a few times they started liking it the reaction that i got was very scary that i thought maybe i'm not it maybe i'm not good enough maybe they didn't like it but then i realized that it's like very difficult for people to take such things in immediately but then when my song what do you want from me came out i wasn't hopeful at all because after boom boom i just like you know I was just a little scared and skeptical about this entire situation but when what do you want from me came out people just went crazy slow it down what do you want from me what do you want from me yeah i'm afraid what do you want from me what do you want from me I got a crazy response from people like 
I can't even explain the feeling that I felt, you know, when I saw the comments and the uproar. I think it was the most famous song of Nescafe Basement season 2. And you know, people literally started calling me the what do you want from me girl. I would go to tuitions at that time and I would go to different places and people would come up and be like, "Oh, you're the what do you want from me girl." And they would come up to me and take my autograph and I'd be like, "What? How is that even possible?" But it was very interesting. and that's how i got famous at that time and i got a lot of opportunities i got a lot of chances and that's you know it it like paved my way and then i started thinking about pursuing music as a career professionally because i could see that there were a lot of opportunities for for like you know new voices in pakistan because the music industry was in a slump back then and you know there was no music coming up and people were tired of listening to the old same old music so i got a few opportunities which were very very interesting i i made a few songs i worked with a lot of brands i worked with seven up Strepsils, Pepsi, Fruita Vitals. I collaborated with a lot of artists. Um, a lot of brands wanted me to do their campaigns, and I did them. So I've done quite a few ads as well. So I got, I was very grateful and lucky to get all those opportunities. And I, I toured a lot. I did a lot of concerts. I, I went to Jiki, which was a great place for a concert, and um, I traveled all over Pakistan. performing with my nest cafe basement you know gang and it was a lot of fun and you know my career just just it just took off right after nest cafe and uh, maybe it took off too fast you know maybe i needed a break so i then just paused myself and i decided to you know think of other things that i wanted to do in life but yeah it it did help me a lot and even now i it's not like i don't do music anymore i'm trying to work on my own music i'm trying to create new things that i can show the world and also just be myself if i get a few like very nice corporate gigs or something that's i'm that i'm interested in then i'll just say yes to it and i'll still do it so if we look at the music that is being released worldwide by some of the artists do you think that some of the lyrics are like project objectification of women what's your stance on women empowerment when it comes to music I think that's like a very big question because if you if I talk about music worldwide then obviously yes there's so much objectification like especially in rap music and where writers are not even thinking about what they're writing quite harmful especially to the youth a lot of people are listening to these artists a lot of kids are just memorizing these lyrics and just singing these songs without even knowing what they mean which is very troubling especially for the youth when they don't understand such things i mean we can't stop these people from cre- from creating such songs and you know writing such lyrics but what we can do is that we can just put a filter like parents these days can make sure that they ki- they that their kids don't listen to they're not nice to listen to because they don't have nice lyrics they they objectify women so we need to be more careful uh, about what we make our children listen to So once we know the difference between what's right and wrong I think we can make our own decisions and listen to what we like and you know encourage that. Uh in your opinion what is the future of music industry for the female artists for people who want to pursue music as their career and for women? I think the future is here. There are so many talented female musicians now. They they have so many different styles of music, so many genres. that you can't just put them in a box and be like oh this is one type of crowd that just sings this kind of music people are singing like they see like full rag songs and then at the same time they're also like you know singing western music and then they're collaborating and then doing desi and you know western music together so i feel like the future is very bright and the kind of boom we're having right now in the music industry is amazing because it's great like 
so many people are just coming up like they're just writing songs in their bedrooms and just recording on their phones on garage band and just releasing music and people are really liking it so i think what comes from the heart matters not just you know i think like gender is not even a thing anymore gender doesn't matter anymore especially in pakistan like we've revolutionized i don't know how this has happened but music has just become like a fluid thing now like people don't care about gender anymore people care about what's coming like what's the new thing that's coming then the new genre or new lyrics or the new style of singing so that's what matters like if anybody wants to sing they can just sing here and just release music and social media has played a huge role in that but now people don't even have an excuse like they can't say that there are no platforms for us you know your instagram is your platform your facebook is your platform you can just write songs record them in the comfort of your home and just release them and as you said as you asked if gender you know if if there's a future for females in 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 pakistan you know doing music i think that's not even a question anymore because anyone can do music now and it's it's so easy now like you have all this recording um these software that you can download on your computer and just simply record a song and just release it so what comes from the heart matters lyrics matter melodies matter genres matter styles matter i don't think gender matters at all one last question so who's your favorite artist ha uh, that's the most difficult question you asked in this entire podcast if you ask uh my inspiration my legend my motivation my mother <laughs> i think i would call i i would give that title to adele but because adele has changed my life when i was a kid i started listening to her and that's you know how i started singing in the first place so a lot of my uh, vocal tone texture i would not compare it to adele at all but i would say that i've learned most of it from her and you know her her album 25 and all those previous songs that she had released i would just sing them all the time and that's how i learned how to sing i think and even now like uh, if you play an adele song if you don't see me crying in the corner that's not pretty easy because and um, i think about adele if i ever in my life get to see her live i think i will die that day like period i think i would die that day for me it's like it's like a dream come true and not even a dream like i think i would die if i see her alive like if i see her right in front of me singing that would be like my my life complete because i i love her to bits that brings us to the end of the podcast episode thank you so much for easy for joining us and for taking out the time to be here and i wish you best of luck for your future endeavors and is there anything else you would want to say to our, our audience Um thank you for having me thank you for listening to me and um I hope that you know this encourages anyone who's listening to this podcast and you know to do music to do what they love and I think that's what you know life is all about you shouldn't just waste it on working and studying because that's what everyone does so if you have a passion if you have something that you love you should follow it you should believe in yourself and even if no one believes in you that doesn't matter because you should always believe in who you are and what you want to do in life and you know once you have that confidence it just shows on your face and in, and it just shows in your personality and that just makes you who you are there's no reason to be liked by people there's no rush to be famous as long as you're authentic and you bring out the best of yourself and show it to others i think that attracts like everybody to you your goal should be to make yourself happy first follow your passions be true to yourself love yourself yeah that's about it thank you so much for being here and thank you everyone for watching bye 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 thank you